People with dementia with Lewy bodies can be very confused one minute, not knowing what common objects are used for, and clear-minded the next. They find it hard to concentrate and can have hallucinations and tremors. She said, you'll never guess what happened to me last night. And she said there was, she said I could hear this meow, meow. She said, oh, it must have been midnight or one o'clock in the morning. And she said, and I looked up, she said, I was fast asleep. She said, I looked up and there's this pussy cat at the end of my bed. And I said, what? She said, I know. She said, I can't believe it. And this is how she was talking to me. She said, I can't believe it. I don't know, you know, obviously it's come in with a staff member or something. And she said, you know, and I wasn't going to get out of bed, so she said it actually got underneath the covers and went to sleep down my, by my feet. I said, well, Mum, didn't you kick it off the bed? She said, no, no, she, it, was, it was nice. It was just nice and warm and cosy. And she said, when I woke up in the morning, it was gone. And she said, so I just assumed, like, you know, it was one of the staff members that had brought the, the pussycat in. So I actually went up to the nursing staff and asked them, and they said, no, there's, there's no way we were allowed to have animals in, in the nursing home. So it was a complete fabrication. But she, I honestly believed her. I thought there was a pussycat there. So did she. He'd go to bed at night and he would toss and turn and moan and groan and I'm thinking, for goodness sake, let me get to sleep. Just go to sleep. And I said to him one night, can't you be quiet? And he said, no. I said, why? What do you, why can't you be quiet? He said, I can't stand the things that's going on in my head. I said, what sort of things? He said, I don't know. And he'd get up and walk. Yeah, the changes, we noticed it in her speech, um, her walking. Um, she had no desire to, to go for a walk. And if she did, she was sort of shuffling around like a little old lady. He was in the um, lounge one day, sitting in a chair, and uh, been watching TV. Anyway, he just jumped up and looked out the window and said, I don't think I'll do that today. And I said, what's that, darling? And he says, the boat. And I looked out because it's blowing a gale out there. And I said, oh, too windy to go sailing. And he said, but I don't want to go sailing. I want to work on my boat. And I thought, oh, uh, yeah, but leave it till tomorrow. Good idea, darling. That's a good one. So yes, he was satisfied with that. So uh, what was the point of me pointing out to him that he hadn't owned a boat for well over 20 years? Um, at that moment, he owned a boat. So I let him think that. A few minutes later, the subject was never mentioned again. It was a time I was standing at the sink and uh, Leon comes along, floating in, my gorgeous husband, and he opens the cupboard door next to me and pulls out this little bin. And I thought, oh, he's going to put something in there. And anyway, he just promptly peed in them. And I turned around and I said, oh, Jesus, that's not to pee in. And he says, very insulted he was too, he says, my name's not Jesus, it's Leon. Well, I was a bit stunned and I didn't really know what to say. So I, and then I felt a bit awful, you know. <laughs> Frontal temporal lobe dementia affects people in different ways, depending on which part of the brain is involved. People can change their behaviour, they can have language problems, an inability to form new memories and process new information, especially when it comes to adapting to new situations. He alienated himself by being very argumentative. Um, always, he always thought he was right. He had no room for error and everyone else around him was wrong. So people put up with that for a while, but then after that, it gets a bit much. I think mood changes are often what brings patients to me as a GP. I often get family members bring someone in because they really noticed irritation. And when you take a history, there's been some changes in memory and functioning for some period of time. And it's a mood change that's finally become intolerable. He used to get up in the middle of the night and start screaming um, because he didn't know where he was. He thought he was back in Italy in the fields and he was crying out for his mother. So often by the time a patient is experiencing mood changes, their dementia is reasonably entrenched and family members and carers often find the mood changes the most difficult aspect of um, caring for someone with dementia. I think 
confusion in their brain is part of what's causing that mood change. It's fear often um, and it's forgetfulness and that person, some people see it as having insight and then they realise that that they can't remember something and they get very frustrated. I actually think it's gone past the point of insight and it's more about frustration and it's more about confusion and that's a very scary space to find yourself in within your own brain um, and that often leads to anger, irrit irritation and outbursts. That is definitely a time when we need to be looking at um, executive functioning and, and that per the individual with dementia, their ability to make decisions for themselves. Dad did go wandering a lot. He actually got out of the nursing home once, um, hit the nurse with his walking stick and took off. I think he was trying to escape from whatever, whatever he thought was after him.